Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's been a few days since we did an update on the gardens. We've had some sun, we've had some rain, we've done some picking, we've done some planting. So hang on until after the break. We'll take a look around, see what's changed. Alright guys, like I said, we're going to get out here today and take a look at some of the gardens and uh, we're going to go over to the row garden and see how the beans and stuff are doing. We'll take a look at the raised beds, check in on the corn, and we'll probably swing over by the sweet potatoes. So, you guys, we got a lot of footage, a lot of things have changed. Tina and I have been really busy out here uh, working in the gardens and uh, doing some planting and stuff. So, we just want to take you around, we'll get you an update on the gardens, and uh, let's go check out that footage. All right, guys, we're going to start over here at the main garden like we usually do, but uh, get you a look at these cabbages down through here. They're on the outside to the right, and the broccoli's on the inside. Guys, we're having a little uh, a little battle or a race. Some of the broccoli has tried to bolt on us, and some isn't, so it's about half and half. We're uh, trying to catch what we can with it, but I'll show you on some uh, over in the raised beds how that's really going to affect us here in this garden. It's only going to be about a 50-50, but uh, in the raised bed garden, it's going to be a little bit worse. So we'll take you over and show you that in a little bit. We got the peppers doing real well here. There's more peppers there. The beans are just as tight as they can be. Got them in there. Just looks like a solid, uh, solid field of beans. We got uh, no signs of disease or anything. So happy about that looks like they're gonna make really well so we should have a lot of green beans to pick got our uh, half runner beans down through here now they yellowed up a little bit but uh, that's not a problem those are the under leaves so the tops of them are doing really really well and the new growth's doing good so it's just something they didn't like in the soil but uh, not a problem well uh, we're gonna get a good crop off of the half runners too so we got our little uh, globe onions we'll work our way around here the little white globe onions are starting to lay over. You can see they're uh, laying down now. So that means they're uh, ready to come out. We'll come out here and lay the rest of them down, let them cure in the sun for a day or two. Then uh, we're gonna go ahead and pop these out. So the next time you see the garden, they probably won't be here. But these are just little white globe onions. I think it's about two, really big one would be three inches across, but most of them are just a couple inches across. They're a nice white globe onion. So, really sharp tasting so we like to dice them up and freeze them and uh, use them in our salsas and stuff uh, you guys have uh, seen the potato buckets here we've got them now they're within a inch or two of the top filled up with soil so they're putting on some new growth but they're uh, getting closer and closer every day we'll come out here and one of these days we'll kick the buckets so we'll check them out and see what we got going on in there but uh, so far it's looking good. I don't see any uh, real big problems. We got a few little eat up leaves, but uh, nothing that's really gonna affect the final yield. Got a couple of uh, volunteers over here. We still haven't figured out what these volunteer squash are though. I'm gonna assume that they're acorn squash since we grew acorn squash in this part of the garden last year. So we grew a bunch of them. So um, probably acorn squash. We'll follow the onions down on along here. And uh, like I said, these are a couple inches. Here's, here's a couple here. That one there, that one there in the middle of the screen. Those are maybe three inches across, but two inches is about average for those little globe onions. But we get down here, these are some more of our acorn squash this year's. So they're putting on their blooms and stuff and getting ready to start making squash. Here's the end of the we're back here. This is the end of the, the half runner beans. They go all the way to the back of the garden here while we're walking. But we come down here to the end of the acorn squash. We got some uh, Tina's big African drum gourds. They're, uh, they're kind of slow taking off. I'm kind of used to a gourd taking off and running real fast. But uh, these are uh, these are growing a little slower than uh, we had thought maybe they would, but we'll get in here and do some weeding around them, see if we can get some fertilizer to them and uh, get them up to speed. But 
That there is the project corn from Central and South America. We want to see how that's doing, but it is taller than any other corn we've got growing right now. So give you a look at that real quick. And then we're going to slide back here to what I really wanted to show you, which is our uh, earth made raised bed. We just raked up the dirt and filled it with some good soil. And uh, the, all the green you see scattered down through there, the peanuts are up and growing. So they'll come up and uh, they form a nice plant. And then a lot of people don't know that uh, the peanuts form underground, but they form underground because the plant sends down tendrils to the surface of the soil. Those tendrils go underneath the ground and a peanut grows at the end of each one. So a peanut has to come up above the ground as a healthy plant and then send down its tendrils and those form your peanuts. So we got some, uh, got some uh, watermelons down here at the end of the garden. Well, let's take a look back up through there. That is the main garden and how it stands right now. But it's looking pretty good. The chickens are actually behaving, which I'm surprised about. But we'll get over to the main garden or the raised garden and take a look. But I wanted to show you that the, the raised bed garden here with the peanuts in it was doing really well and we're happy about that. So let's get over to the raised bed garden. We'll take a look at what's going on over there. All right, guys, you've seen the Brussels sprouts and the cherry tomato here and the lettuce there. It's getting ready to come out. But we had this bed over here. This was the, the little cherry tomato clone. And then we had radish and spinach in here. The radish and spinach are spent. So we have drove two large fence stakes in there. And uh, we have planted some extra tomatoes. So we're just uh, looking forward. We want to try to make a lot of sauce this year. Now there is a, the, you know, the tariffs and taxes that are going in on Mexico. We're not going to get into all of that, but uh, there's a chance that tomato prices will rise. But um, our main concern is just that we have enough to eat here. So um, we want to make sure we got plenty of tomatoes. These are Roma tomatoes that we started from seed and uh, we've got them in here. And uh, we're gonna tie them up to this post when they get big enough to tie them up. But uh, got some new pepper plants in there in the little planter boxes. Tina put those in the other day. We'll head on into the garden. These are the nursery bought peppers. Over here, we got, uh, those are some new peppers that Tina planted in that pot the other day too. Uh, we're looking forward to getting some uh, she usually gets, a, they're usually the large size peppers or they'll be a fancy color, a purple or a chocolate. But uh, if you see them in the planters, then uh, she's probably got something special planted in there and we'll find out about it later. So <laughs> looks like they got some little peppers on them. Look way down in there. But we'll back out here. Guys, this garlic is done. It is ready to come out. So you're probably gonna either see us pull it or the next time you see the raised bed garden, it'll be gone. But this is what your garlic will look like when it's ready to be pulled. We got the bottom two or three leaves are gone and dead and the tops are starting to turn a little brown. And that means it's time to pull. We've done a test, so our test dig and uh, we were happy with the results. So we're gonna get these out of here and uh, we'll try to get that on film for you guys. Let's we'll swing around over here. We've got the watermelon patch. Watermelon plants are still small. Um, we may need to move the ground cherries out from around them, but uh, they're the watermelon are just starting to run. The cantaloupe are getting ready to run. We'll move on up here. We got uh, the cherry tomatoes, the yellow cherries up the middle there are looking good. And the romas on the outsides up the sides are uh, looking good too. So we got romas and yellow cherries in there. We got our, uh, Let's see, the tall ones are, uh, these are peppers, are, uh, we bought those at the nursery. The peppers around the bases there, we started from seed, but uh, we bought the nursery ones just in case the seed ones lagged behind. So we got a little mix of both, we're happy about that. So the seed ones came up and did us well. On across there, there's the garlic again. We've taken the peas out. Um, I'll get that when I come around the other side, but we've taken the peas out of that box there and uh, put some tomatoes in, but we'll roll over here. These are the younger peas. 
They are still making really good peas. I'll get you down in here and uh, show you there's a bunch of peas on that plant. But we got more peas on across the way there. But we'll head up here and uh, we'll try to uh, skip over the camera mount and show you some tomato plants we got in here. We put the pea trellis back in here. That won't do anything. These tomato plants will just get tied up to the big main stake. But we put the pea thing in there just in case they could help them when they were younger. We'll swing over here and show you what some spent peas look like. The peas have fallen over. They were as tall as I am. They've now fallen over and they're starting to turn brown from the heat. The heat's getting the better of them. So we've left these just, we're gonna get one last pick off of them here, probably this afternoon. And then we're gonna take these peas out and put something else in their place. So those are spent. They're ready to have their last picking done. And uh, that'll be the end of them. We'll slide down here and uh, take a look at, we got some more of those little white globe onions. Like I said, these are getting ready to come out. So we'll uh, pop these little globes out of here and uh, we've got some other onions on order and on their way. So we'll uh, show you that when we get in there. And uh, those will be more of our uh, snacker type onions that we leave till the end of the year. So. These are just some little globes. We wanted to get these in and out. They go fast, but uh, they're just not uh, not what we want in here for snacker onions. So we're gonna get these out of the way. Our uh, broccoli over here, let's see, we can zoom in here. It's got some heads on it. Not doing too bad, but not getting real big. So guys, it just turned off hot so fast that the broccoli is just gonna try to jump up and bolt. I think we're gonna have a lot better luck with garlic in the fall or not garlic but uh the broccoli wanted to jump up on us but uh, we should have a lot better luck with it in the fall that's usually when i like to grow it anyway jump across here got some more brassicas over here got a little leaf damage got some bugs going on but uh got some more broccoli heads in here we we'll probably need to get these picked off of here but looking good we'll get these out of here and then we'll use these beds for something else for summer gardening but the beets are looking strong. They're uh, they're probably an inch across now. But got two more beds of these peppers. They're a mix of nursery peppers and seed peppers, like we had down on the other end. All different colors of bell peppers. And uh, at a dollar a piece, we'll be glad to have them. So there's my hot peppers. Those are uh, ghost peppers. So it's going to be a nice bushy plant. But we'll look on down through here, and these are some more. Like I said, just a mix of nursery peppers and the smaller ones are our seed peppers. So here's what uh, here's what I was kind of wanting to get over here and show you. These are the smaller broccoli that we planted from seed. And uh, I don't believe, even though we put them in the shade, you can tell the kind of filtered light there, see the difference between the shade and the sun, or that end of the bed's a little sunnier. But uh, we tried putting them in the shade and thought it would buy us some time but it's not gonna buy us enough. So the broccoli is probably gonna come out of here. We're gonna give it a chance and we're kind of using it as a, um, as what they call a bait crop. Um, there's no insecticide or anything on there. So we actually want the worms to come over here and uh, leave our larger plants alone. So um, we kind of got it set up as a bait crop. We'll go ahead and pull those out here, probably leave them another week or so. Um, if you've seen down through the ground, this has been seeded through with a uh, um, yellow onion and uh, they'll come up through underneath there and uh, well, they'll already have a jump start when we pull this broccoli out of here. We don't have time to, we don't have time to screw around <laughs> about every square foot of dirt around here has to produce all year long. So if somebody sees something going wrong, we will just plant right in underneath it if we have to. And, uh, We'll get these broccoli plants out of the way and get these onions rolling. So come back up here to the peas and I think we've made it all the way around the raised bed garden. But we'll slide over there and take a look at the corn and some of the other stuff and uh, we'll bring you back in just a second. Okay guys, we're over here at the sweet corn patch and if you follow it along, we have a couple hundred squash down through the front of here. Got two long, long rows of tight pack squash. But they are starting to bloom and we've had our first little little uh, squash start to form so we're real happy about that had a few people ask about the yellowing leaves that they saw on the squash before 
but uh, as I explained, it's probably uh, some high nitrogen burn from when we've had sweet corn in this patch before. So we used a lot of fertilizer on it and a lot of nitrogen, and it was probably a bit much for the young squash. But as you can see, as they've grown, the plant has adapted and uh, we got some bright or nice dark green growth on there and that's a sign of plenty of nitrogen. So they found a level that they're happy with and uh, they're probably gonna do just fine the rest of the year. But let's see, back here we got our sweet corn and our rule of thumb with sweet corn is we want it knee high by July. So it's looking like we're not gonna have any problems making that, it's almost knee high now. You see down there on the other end of the garden is the project, or our uh, hybrid corn project corn. And uh, it is, well, I won't say it's double the height of the other corn, but it's getting close. So it's a fast growing corn. Um, it's a, what our hybrid project is. We haven't said a whole lot about it this year, but uh, in previous years, we've, we've tried to explain it. It's a, we're trying to make a, a corn that's good for uh, both feed corn and as for human consumption for grinding into flour and grits and all kinds of good stuff so we're just uh we keep playing with it year after year and uh, we keep adding to it we add different uh um, old heirloom and organic seeds to it and uh, we just keep pushing it farther and farther each year and each year it gets better and better and uh, we get more and more consistent results so we're real happy about the hybrid corn it's a it's a real strong corn so we're looking forward to uh, seeing what it does this year and uh, we'll add that back to our seed supply and we'll just keep going from there. So guys, we got the gourds on the back of the garden. I'm gonna make that a separate clip. Everybody's asked about it. Usually I just add it into the sweet corn clip, but uh, people keep asking about them. So we're just gonna go around back there and I'll be back in just a second to show them to you. Okay guys, we're on the back side of the sweet corn now. To give you some perspective over there's the raised bed garden and the black a am samani chickens and uh, they're having a little battle over there so they're probably going to make some noise but wanted to take you down through here these are the gourds that grow on the back side of the sweet corn and uh, i'm not going to pretend to under know what all of them are this is tina's project but she has some uh, apple gourds i know there's an apple gourd in there there's a banjo gourd um, there's one called a canteen gourd and uh, I know one of the ones she's really interested in are the giant African drum gourds. So you guys can look those up for yourselves but um, oh and there's a giant birdhouse gourd. It's uh, supposed to be bigger than a regular birdhouse gourd so we're thinking about maybe setting up some uh, a martin, purple martin trellis and have some uh, birdhouse gourds on it so be watching for that tina will probably craft those over the winter and that'll make up some videos for us to get us through until next spring so those are the gourds growing back here guys some of them did better than others but we got a little bit of everything so i'm glad for that we'll cut you back in here in a second we'll go look at some other stuff all right guys let's take a quick run down through the Wood raised beds is our original raised bed garden. We started out with these six wood boxes. They're three by five. And it was nice, we made them out of eight foot boards and each board only required one cut. So we cut it at five feet and had three feet left over. So made for an easy way to build a bed. So these are our strawberries with the asparagus up through them. That's what the ferns are. There's some basil and stuff, some more strawberries, some more herbs. And guys, these are the these are the spare sweet potato slips that we had. They're in this these two boxes here, and uh, everybody's asked us over the years the the leaves and the shoots and stuff are edible on a sweet potato. So uh, these are a little crowded. They probably won't make very good potatoes, but we're gonna try and uh, see how edible these uh, sweet potato vines are because that's we've never tried it, but. Uh, um, it's you know it's something that uh, we grow every year and we have an abundance of so we can cut them off of our main sweet potato bed but um we want to we want to see how they do here so we're just going to grow some out here a little crowded but the vines should be good and long and healthy so we're going to try eating those and we'll uh, report back to you on that got some more uh 
dill and caraway and catnip. I think that's catnip back there. Got some more stuff growing in the herbs in here. And uh, come down here, got some uh, pickling cucumbers. They're looking sharp. Glad to have those. Carrot beds looking nice and packed. Uh, we'll be glad to have those. That carrot bed there we won't discuss. That's the one that had the snake in it. So we dug it up and uh, what's left are just what seeds, you know, managed to make it after we got done digging in it. So um, it's all good. That bed there will have 200 and some carrots in it anyway. So we have plenty of carrots in the house. So not a big loss and we'll replant carrots in the fall. So there's some more cucumbers. But what I was bringing you around to show you is we have the tomatoes in. So we got the tomatoes put in. There's 40 stakes down through here. And uh, so we got 40 plants. We planted all Romas this year. So there's some different varieties. There's some Amish paste and some, uh, some other ones mixed in there, but they are all Romas. So we're gonna see how they do. 40 should hold us pretty good, plus what we've got over there. We'll film back up here. There's Tina and the UPS guy having a discussion on the porch. So <laughs> we'll check out these tomatoes. Looking good. There's a newspaper down around all of them and then um, grass clippings around it. We've got a lawn sweeper. But after we get done mowing seven acres or so, we usually have plenty of lawn clippings. So we'll get you a look at those tomatoes. And I'll show you the asparagus is over here doing good. They're looking pretty sharp. Glad for that. We'll swing around here. And uh, there's the sweet potatoes to get you some perspective here. We're over by the chicken house. There's the shed. Tina's pond's back there in the background. There's the orchard. Need to slow down and look at some of the good stuff too. So there's the orchard. Really pretty pond. Flowers are coming in nice. Those will bloom out here. Uh, let's see, the orchard's on the back side of the chicken run there. Or not the orchard, the grape arbor. I'll we'll show you more of that when the grapes start coming on. But for right now, we'll get over here. We'll take a look at the sweet potatoes. And they are taking off. The, they've stood back up. I think I told you they'll uh, try to lay down on you and uh, they'll act like they're gonna die. But you keep putting water to them and uh, this is what happens. They bounce right back, not a problem. So guys, that's gonna about wrap it up. Let me uh, get back up here and uh, See if I forgot anything, and then uh, we'll wish you well. All right, I was walking back up to the portion. I'm trying to figure out why these two chickens are digging pits in my yard. But these are buffalace Brahmas. But for some reason, they look like they're both, those two hens are digging their own holes, and uh, he doesn't seem to mind. So that is really weird. I have no idea. They usually dig in a, uh, They'll dig a stripe or they'll dig along the fence. So I very rarely see them just dig a hole straight down into the ground. So I don't know where they're going, guys, but uh, it's a long way to China. So let me get back up here and we'll be right back. All right, guys, I was headed back up past the grapes and I want to show you just how many grapes this thing has on it. It has a ridiculous amount of new grapes growing on it. We'll just swing down through here, but these are the purple Concord grapes. We'll can up some uh, grape jelly, some grape jam. But I wanted to show you these vines are just loaded with grapes. Uh, normally they get tore up by the Japanese beetles. We have some Japanese beetle traps that I ordered the other day coming in. So we'll show you how those work. But I just wanted to show you how loaded down these grape vines are with grapes. This is probably gonna be a a really good year for them so all right now i really am going to let you guys go so hang on and i'll be right back all right guys one last quick stop we'll swing up here by the trailer this is a, a trailer we use to move our tractor and stuff around with we take it over to dad's and stuff but it's a big heavy duty it's actually a car hauler so it's well enough to hold that tractor but we uh, use it as a tabletop a lot of the time too. So we got the seed tomatoes going over here. Still got quite a few left. So as some of these other things come out, we'll uh, be replacing them with some of these Roma tomatoes we started. And uh, 
you'll just see us filling back in holes. There were probably going to be more tomatoes than you've seen us grow in the past, but we're real happy to be doing it, and we'll be real happy to have them come the end of the year. So let me get back over here. Oh, and uh, let me slide over here. That's a busted project. And this right here, all I can tell you is, is don't buy bamboo seeds from China. They don't come up. So we're really disappointed. We put a little bit of money into that. Got no results out of it. So all I can tell you is, is don't buy bamboo seeds from China. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap it up for the video today. I need to get back inside. As you can see, it's a sunny day and I am wearing the wrong color shirt for that. So guys, we hope you enjoyed the video. We hope you enjoyed looking around the gardens here. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up and uh, leave us a comment down below. Or if you have any questions about anything you've seen on the video here, leave your questions down there too. Your uh, comments and your thumbs up and your questions, they all help as interactions with the video and it tells YouTube to show our videos to more people and that helps us out here on the homestead. The more views we get, the more pennies we collect from YouTube and uh, it, ain't, it ain't a whole bunch of dollars, but a few pennies really helps. So. Guys, if you would, hit that thumbs up and uh, leave us a comment down below. Tell us how your garden's going. Tell us how your day's going. But uh, we really appreciate it when you do that. And if you like the content here on the channel and you're not subscribed, we hope you will. There's a red subscribe button down there and uh, next to it is a bell. And if you hit that bell, that'll send you notifications whenever we release a new video. And that's a great way to keep up with the channel, guys. It just, uh, it'll tell you we, we've uh, put out a new video and uh, it helps when, uh, um, when a video comes out, the more views it gets up front. That's another metric that we try to meet and, uh, um, and it tells YouTube to, uh, again, share our videos with more people. So we really appreciate it when you guys do that. So anyway, um, thank you for coming by the channel. We hope you guys enjoyed the gardens and stuff. There's a lot of stuff going on and a lot of changes. So we're just trying to keep up. It's gonna make our, uh, our video schedule a little erratic here for a while. But once we get to harvesting and stuff, those are the videos we know you guys really enjoy. Is uh, It's fun to watch it grow, but it's really neat to see it come out of the ground. So we can't wait to get to the harvesting videos too. So you guys stick around. We'll catch you in the next one.